This video is sponsored by Audible. Get your free audiobook plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days using the link down in the description or texting mumbo jumbo to 500 500. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll know that last year we picked up a Land Rover Defender. Now there are a number of reasons why we did this, most of them revolving around the fact that I've always wanted one. I just think they're really cool cars. But one thing that definitely factored into the decision is that they're fantastic at transporting large quantities of camera equipment. So here is the loading bay, and for me personally, it's very important that we keep this organized because otherwise when you're out on shoots, it's incredibly frustrating not being able to find the stuff that you need. Now on the left hand side, we have got all of the arms that you mount up to C-stands to allow you to fit light modifiers or diffusers. And then off to the right of that, we've got all of the clamps and bungee cords that we often need when we're filming. Then we've got our lighting arsenal, the Aperture 300D, the two Aperture 120Ds, and two Draycast LEDs, all secured in place. And on top of the Aperture 300D, we have got the cloud mount, and then also a magnetic car mount, which allows us to mount cameras to the cars that we're filming. Now hanging from the ceiling, we have got all of our filters that allow us to change the color of the lights, and also a space light to increase the ambient light in a room. Now towards the back, you can see we've got a cool box, which has been a very welcome addition for both me and also the people we're filming with. And then also off to the right of that, we have got our Movi Pro. To the right of the Movi Pro, we've got our miscellaneous items box, and then we also have some diffusers and some large black sheets that are hanging on the side of the Defender, which once again, we just occasionally need when we're out filming. Now, one of the most important things that we have is running along the floor, which are all of the C-stands, and then we have plenty of space off to the left of those to put in all of the penny cases that have cameras, lenses, and all that sort of stuff on the inside of them. Now specs wise, it isn't really anything special. It's a 2005 TD5 Land Rover Defender 110, which means that it's the longer wheelbase, so we have more storage at the back. And it's been resprayed in a color that isn't really standard to Land Rover Defenders. There's a color called Keswick Green, which is quite similar, but it's a little bit more saturated. But the color that's on our Defender is unlike anything that I've really seen before, and it looks so cool. I mean, it's just, as soon as I saw it online, uh, I, I said to Vicky that we have to go and check this thing out because this is kind of like my dream specification. I absolutely love the black wheels, I love the black roof, and then that color just totally sets it off. Um, it, it seemed perfect. Now the only thing that I was slightly concerned about when we got it was how we were going to film car to car tracking shots because when we used to use the 100 horsepower Panda, I used to sit myself in the boot and get myself harnessed up and then we used to suspend the Movi from the actual boot struts which meant that they often tended to break. We suspended it from there and then I would just hang out in the boot and film cars like that. Now that's fantastic and it worked really well. It was a tiny bit, I think, illegal, but it, it definitely got the job done. But with the Defender, we couldn't do that because instead of the, the boot opening upwards, the boot actually opens out to the side, which means that uh, it's impossible to do it. So we went through a few different ideas. Uh, the first setup that we used was suction mounts, which was always very scary and it took a long time to set up. Uh, then we got ourselves a magnet mount, which hilariously, uh, the Defender, it turns out, isn't magnetic. So that definitely didn't work. And then I came up with a kind of crafty solution. I got the suction mount thing, uh, which is this thing right here. Uh, the gimbal and the camera all mounts down to the bottom, but then I drilled these two massive holes in it. On the back of a Defender, you've got a spare wheel that's mounted up. We just take that spare wheel off, we chuck on this little camera mount, and we do that the day before the shoot. And then when we turn up to the shoot, all we have to do is grab the Movi, chuck it on the bottom of this mount, and then we're good to go. It takes like 20 seconds to set up for tracking shots, whereas before it would take about half an hour to 45 minutes. And the results are really good. We've used it recently on the Rat Pack shoot, which is going to be coming out soon. And I was super, super impressed. It's absolutely fantastic. And what people were even more surprised about when I posted about it on Twitter, was the fact that the way that we actually control the gimbal when it's out the back of the Defender is using a PlayStation 4 controller. So the Movi, it's a kind of little known fact about the Movi Pro, but you can actually use a PlayStation 4 controller to control the gimbal. So you can kind of look around using the joysticks, but also because we're using a red, uh, you can actually control the camera using the controller as well. So I press the circle button to start recording. I use the triggers to toggle your aperture. And I also use another joystick to control the focus. So I can focus back and forth using the joystick of the controller, which shows that years and years of playing video games has actually paid off because I'm quite good at controlling the gimbal using a controller these days. So in conclusion, I mean, as flawed as the Defender is, as 
I guess terrible as it is to drive. I mean, it's so basic in there. There's absolutely no driver aids or anything. It feels like the clutch is being held up by Hercules. It's so heavy. Uh, there's no air conditioning. There's no nothing. Despite all of this, I absolutely love it. Uh, I can't see myself ever selling it. I just think it's, it's a car that's so full of character. Um, and it's always entertaining to drive. And it does a fantastic job on the filming shoots at just being a great utility vehicle. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm chuffed to bits. Now before I go, I want to give you guys some sweet deals. So to get your free audiobook plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days, head over to audible.com forward slash mumbo jumbo or text mumbo jumbo with no spaces to 500 500. I've used Audible for years. I listen to audiobooks when I'm working, when I'm driving pretty much anywhere that there is a speaker that's generally an audiobook plan. For me personally, I really love nonfiction. And with Audible, I can hear about past events. I can learn about incredible human feedback or I can even learn new skills just by listening. A recent title that I heavily enjoyed was Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Foa. It covers his deep dive into memory contests, going from absolutely nothing all the way up to actually being really quite good at remembering large quantities of things. And the thing that I found most interesting about it is that I found a lot of parallels between what he was going through and what I went through when I first started picking up cinematography. On top of all the regular audiobooks, there's also Audible Originals, which are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers from all over the place, from journalism through to theater to literature and more. So in conclusion, Audible is a fantastic service. Uh, it definitely helps me with my day to day. And I would highly suggest going to audible.com forward slash mumbo jumbo or texting mumbo jumbo no spaces to 500 500 to pick up your free audiobook as well as two Audible originals when you try it out for 30 days. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you later.